let's go through the setup for the AppV5 sequencer. Now here I've got a Windows 7 64-bit virtual machine. I'm going to use that for my sequencing. It's a clean machine. Um, you don't have to have it completely clean if you do not like. You could install things like Office if, you choo if you're choosing to not virtualize Office in your environment. Uh, you can install common components like middleware like Java, Flash Player, uh, Visual C++ redistributable, um, dot, uh, ver multiple versions of .NET. If you know that a lot of applications in your environment require that middleware, you may feel like installing it on the virtual machine to save yourself from having to do it before sequencing those applications. But ideally you want to keep it as clean as possible. And that is because you don't want to risk the chance of noise being captured into your sequenced application. Uh, by noise, I mean files or registries not that don't belong to your application. So on this virtual machine, I've installed some prerequisites that are required for App V5. If you go to the TechNet website, there's actually a topic called App V5 prerequisites. And it gives the prerequisites for actually all of the components. But for the sequencer, you could see we require .NET 4, PowerShell 3.0, and also a Windows update. Uh, the Windows update differs uh, depending on uh, what OS you're running, 32-bit, 64-bit, or server. Something to note, if you're actually going to be sequencing on Windows 8, the some of the prerequisites are actually already taken care of. Uh, be that PowerShell 3.0, uh, it's got .NET Framework 4.5, so there's it supersedes 4.0, so that that's that covered. Um, and you may come across an issue where you see an error when you try to install the update saying that it's not applicable. Now that's possible because this, if, if you've actually uh, updated your virtual machine to the latest updates, which I would strongly advise you do, uh, that update has actually been superseded. So it's possible that uh, you've actually got a different update which supersedes that update. So it's most likely that you're okay if you get that error. Now if you installed the sequencer uh, for 4.6 SP1 or SP2, then you may be aware that that installed a virtual drive. AppV5 does not actually install a virtual di drive anymore because that's not a requirement. The setup for AppV5 sequencer is actually very, very straightforward. Now, before you begin sequencing, it's a good idea to prepare your virtual machine. So like I said, mine's a very vanilla uh, virtual machine uh, with nothing installed. It's just what's put down by the operating system plus the prerequisites for the AppV sequencer. So what you want to do is eliminate any background pro processes that may run and interfere with the sequencer. Uh, some background processes might actually create noise and by noise I mean they may update files, registry, or even add new files or registry as a background process and if that happens while you're trying to do your sequence those files and those registry updates may get included into your virtual package which you do not want. So it's advised to go to services on your machine on your virtual machine. Browse to Windows Defender and you'll want to dis stop then disable the service and you'll want to do the same for Windows Updates and also Windows Search. So only Updates is started on my machine because I already switched off some of the other ones for the sake of saving some time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop and I'm also going to disable. Something to note about Windows Update is assuming that you're using your virtual machine in your enterprise domain, uh, 
There may be a group policy set to enforce Windows updates. And if that is the case, your virtual machine may be in AD getting that policy. So you may want to move it in Active Directory so it does not get that policy so Windows updates stay off. Now, like I said, I'm using Windows 7 64-bit. I picked that because that's my target platform. That's what my users are going to be using. I strongly advise you to use whatever your target platform is as your sequencing base. Uh, a few years ago, it used to be Microsoft's best, best practice to use the lowest common build. So if you still had, for example, uh, Windows 2000 in your environment, they would advise you to use Windows 2000 as your sequencing machine. Now, I, with the progress of application installs and logic built in to accommodate for newer operating systems, I feel it's a better idea to use your most recent or your target, the one that touches the majority of your end users. There may be some cases where if you need to support a dual environment and you still have XP or yeah, let's say XP in your environment, uh, you may find that an application sequence on Windows 7 64-bit won't work on your XP, uh, in which case it may be missing something from Windows XP. So you could go back, sequence on XP, and try to capture that into the sequence application and see if it works there. Now uh, let's go ahead and actually carry out the install. So again, we want to browse to our MDOP 2013 disk. And again, we want to go to Microsoft Application Virtualization for Desktops. And this time we want to click on the actual sequencer. So we get the first dialog screen. Just hit install. Yes, I want to accept the terms. Uh, I don't want to join the program at this time. <laughs> That's my preference. Whatever you feel yourself. All right, I'll uh, forward through this to speed it up. Okay, and with that, our setup is actually completed. So, that's it. Simple as that.